Heroes in General is a free-to-play online MMO FPS strategy game. Now if you think that's a lot to take in while only describing one game, just hold on. It gets worse. While this game is hard to compare to any other one game, I'd say it's most similar to Planet Side 2, both in the good aspects and the bad. Heroes in General features a three-way faction war, with the teams being separated into Germany, the United States, and the Soviet Union. For some reason, the Soviets and the US fight each other, but I'm going to accept that as a gameplay decision, and not historical ignorance. If you want an idea on which faction might be right for you, the US is usually meta-abusing jerks, Germany is full of tryhards, and the Soviet Union is full of idiots, so choose your side carefully. While not the most visually striking game on the market, it does look good for what it's trying to accomplish. You will see people on the forums complaining about how their GTX 1080 Ti can't run it without stuttering. Then on the other side of the forum, you see people begging for better graphics. The game runs fine on my computer, and I only have an old AMD hex core and a 1050 Ti. My opinion is that video games with bad graphics but a good art style look better than games with good graphics and no art style. That being said, this game is in the middle of those with a slightly cartoonish style and graphics that I would have been impressed by back in 2016. Keep in mind, this is anything but a AAA game, so that level of graphical fidelity is impressive by my mark. The actual sound quality in the game is quite good. Each gun has a specific sound to it, and each starter weapon feels equally meaty, but in different ways. Tank noises, on the other hand, sound somewhat lower quality than the rest of the game. Being shot in the side. There we go, the problems. Music, on the other hand, is relatively good. Each faction has their own theme. The Soviet one reminds me of when I used to play RuneScape back in 2003. But unfortunately, they only play in the menus. There is no in-game music. The game itself is a relatively generic first-person shooter. You capture and hold points and shoot bad men to win. The progression system is tied to ribbons. The more you use a weapon, type of weapon, or vehicle, the higher that ribbon will go, leading you to unlocking better add-ons for the weapon or different support boxes or ammo types for your vehicles. You also get ribbons for walking. While this game represents historical weapons and vehicles, don't expect them to be historically accurate. If you haven't noticed from my talk of planes and tanks earlier, this is a combined arms game, meaning that tanks, planes, and infantry are all on the same battlefield together. Sometimes this is great, other times it'll leave you wondering how this game got released. The tank gameplay is fun, but highly frustrating at times. When you're not getting constantly flanked by tank destroyers, you'll be getting swarmed by anti-tank infantry. This however can be avoided by sticking with your infantry, as they have a better chance of covering you against flanking nerds. Planes, on the other hand, are a completely random and annoying crapshoot. This is the most historically accurate part of the game, because whichever side has the most planes wins the air battle every time, with very few exceptions. But that's only if the enemy planes aren't just ramming you. The game has a rather annoying economy system where depending on how much ammo you use or how much you die, you wear down your equipment. Which, at the end of a match, needs to be repaired. While they have made this a little more forgiving in recent updates, each add-on you get for your gun also wears down, so a fully modified gun will cost you a lot more money in repairs after every match. Meanwhile, the only way to get more money is to play more of the game. For every hour you play of the game, you get a base amount of money based on what your level is. Then you get bonus money for how well you do in the battle. The only way to get more money is to wear down your weapons and vehicles more, making you pay more to get them repaired. While the actual bugs in this game are few and far between, the biggest blood-sucking parasite of a bug is the community, who, on every update without fail, will complain about how this isn't what they wanted and how the game is worse than it used to be. My favorite complaint is seeing people say they want to add a new faction to the game, even though when they added the Soviets, everyone complained about how they were broken and should have been removed. 
You might think I'm straw manning this, but this is the truth. If you look in the comments of any of the dev blogs for this game, you will see the vast majority of them complaining about something benign, or about adding factions that would make the game unbalanced or just plain stupid stuff. The devs did make a progress tracking website after they were criticized for not being open enough with what they were working on, but people still think they're going to add a new faction in the next update. Well, this has been cathartic. I've played this game for about four years, and I'm glad I can finally vent my opinions to the open void. Anyway, this has been Thievish Login, also known as Mickey749, and thanks for watching. See you guys in two years for the next review. Bye bye. Turned around too. That was funny.